See, I look so much more like myself now. Oh, God. Especially with this. <laughs> uh, you gotta just have like a little bit going wrong. That's how I feel, right? Let's start from the top. Hi, my name is Megan Batoon, and today... See, this is me like triple checking the background. Do I like it enough? I think that's a little too far. I think it should be a little bit closer. You know what? This is what's really going on puts my dirty chai down. My name is Megan Batoon and I'm going through a massive shift. I loved reading the comments on the last video. It made me feel like I was on the right path and that I was excited. I, I'm still very excited. Ah, because you know why? I must preface, it's 8.49 AM. <laughs> I've already sat down in this setup, had a different shirt on, and it didn't feel like me. This entire thing is gonna be me trying to figure out who I am and hopefully that can resonate with you because we are shifting. Whether we want to believe it or not, like 2020 did a number on us and I think it's our job and our privilege, honestly, to be able to take those notes and figure out what the hell we wanna do with them, whatever that means. What I wanna talk about in this video is gonna be important for every other video I make in this corner because it is the most vital thing I've learned from therapy and that is feeling your body. Being in tune with your body and feeling your feelings, I feel like it's the only thing we should have learned, not the only thing, it is one of the other things that we definitely should have learned in school. So anyway, I guess this is gonna be school. <laughs> this is gonna be emotional school, classes in session. Before I found my current therapist, I went to like maybe four other ones. None of them really ever told me this vital piece of information. She tells me to feel my feelings. And then I was like, mm. What if I didn't? What is the end goal? Because I'll just like scoot around that and then I'll get to the end goal without having to feel my feelings. That sounds good because I'm a results oriented person or I used to be. That is the narrative that I'm shifting away from because I'm realizing that that's not really productive to my lifestyle. She never gave me an answer and she could have, but she wanted me to find it on my own, which is therapy. I was like, cool, fine, how do I do it? And she said the next time that some sort of emotion comes up, whether it be shame or embarrassment, jealousy comparison, whatever it is, sit down and feel it. And that just means like pinpoint where on your body you're feeling those sensations and describe them in detail. If I was embarrassed, I would feel heat in my cheeks. And like, what kind of heat? This is where you're artistic author comes out. This is where your Oscar Wilde comes out. You really want to describe it in detail and be like, it feels like the inside of a toaster on each of my cheeks, radiating, blah, blah, blah. You know where it goes. I'm not a poet. I'm not a therapist. I'm not a teacher. I'm literally just telling you what I've learned to try and help you. And then I was like, okay, once I feel the feelings, then what's gonna happen? And I basically had a checklist. Like, once I feel my feelings, check. Then what? Then I'm over it. Check. Then I'm perfect. Oh my God. That's not how it works. But once you feel your feelings, I'm gonna tell you. Cause I'm like, I could do what she did and you figure it out on your own, but like I'm giving you the cheat codes. So what actually happens, and you have to do it this way, you have to sit with your feelings and feel them. And then once you feel them, it kind of rides a wave. So you feel really embarrassed, then you start to feel the sensations. And then once you feel the sensations at the max capacity, then they start to dissipate. So you just have to ride the wave of an emotion. That was so helpful for me to listen to my body through the pandemic. Because once I understood that, and once I had that in my toolbox, then anytime that any emotion came up, I just knew how to deal with it. So if I start to feel anxious, I'm able to sit with it and then distance myself enough to start asking myself why that might be happening. What's happening at any given moment is you are dealing with two versions of yourself. You're dealing with your subconscious and you're dealing with your logical brain. Your subconscious is an overachiever in the worst way. You know what your subconscious is? Your subconscious is that student that wants to finish the test and slam the pencil down before everybody else to make sure that they know that they're a quick test taker or smarter. Ugh. It's like your subconscious and your ego are against you all the time. So what we need to do is retrain our subconscious from being a boy. <laughs> Your subconscious is doing the knee-jerk reaction stuff. We as a species have developed so much technologically, but honestly our brains are still floppy disks. We have to work with archaic technology that's embedded in us in order to 
run normally. All of these negative thoughts, all of these inner critics, those are viruses. We basically have to get in control of those. And the best way that I've found is to listen to your body and understand where these thoughts are coming from. I'm gonna repeat a lot of these concepts in different videos because they truly span my entire life. This is a good place to start. As humans, we are a community-based species. We thrive on community and nobody wants to be an outcast. When we didn't even have fire, we needed to survive, right? We needed to figure out who is gonna get the food, who is gonna take care of the kids, who's gonna do all these things, and that's why community is so important. And to feel a sense of belonging and that we are safe. That is the main feeling that we want as humans. Anytime we feel like we might not be part of community, whether we just like don't fit in, cancel culture, embarrassment, shame, all these things is just like, oh, are people not going to accept me? Back then, if people didn't accept you, you were out of the community, out of the tribe, and you died. Inside us, we still have that fight or flight mentality, and that's still triggered today, even if we aren't going to die, even if we aren't getting chased by a bear. If an email comes in and we don't like what it says, or even if it's just the email comes in in general, if I'm being honest, like sometimes that is attacking me, <laughs> then our fight or flight mentality gets triggered and we need to keep that in check because the email is not a bear, the email is not kicking us out of the tribe, but it does feel like that. So understanding where we came from is very important. I can just see all the comments now. <laughs> there are so many people that are like, did you just do DMT or save some shrooms for the rest of us? That is so funny. Um, doesn't think it's funny. <laughs> well, it's just like, no, I haven't. But honestly, what would that be like? You know, what would I be like if I did do that? <sighs> if this is where I'm at now, oh my God. This all comes from self-reflection. This is another thing. I've made videos before about like check in with yourself. You could check in with yourself at any given point in a day. That might be nice. When you wake up, set aside a couple minutes and check in and do like a body scan. You could like schedule five minutes here and there in your calendar to just sit with your body and just like start to become a little bit more present. You know what it's like? It's almost like we are babysitters of our body and our bodies are babies that are gonna die if we don't give them what they need. Whether we wanna admit it or not, we all have trauma. And especially now, even if you don't think that the pandemic has really affected you, your body is being affected by it subconsciously. Anytime that you feel anxious, take a break and explore that feeling and ask your body like, what would support me right now? What do I need in this moment? Is it a nap? Is it a break? Is it water? Is it oxygen? Is it sunlight? Is it french fries? Whatever that is, give it to yourself. You're the caretaker of yourself. Why aren't you taking good care of yourself? That's your job. That is your only job is to keep you safe. But we get in our own way all the time because we think we need to be doing other things. Oh, I'm getting lightheaded. I'm like, well, I also haven't eaten today. It's also 9 a.m. You know what it is? It's like <laughs> your body, we're kind of like turtles. Stay with me. Turtles are the original mobile home, right? That's their home. The shell, they live there. <laughs> we are kind of like that too. We have homes, sure, sure, sure. But our body is our home. We never get to move bodies. I mean, I maybe, Freaky Friday, of course. This is our home from start to finish. Imagine never opening a window. <gasps> what do you want to say about listening to your body? Anything? Oh my God, parkour. <laughs> All of that to say, our brain tries to control our body so many times with everything. And this is deeply rooted in diet culture, which I'll do a video on that too. Okay, you know what? We're gonna go there. Just a little bit. No! All I will say is your body knows best. You know what we want? This is what we need to do. We need to get on our side. That's a whole nother video, but we need to get on our side with our body. We need to be a team with our body. We need to stop being against it. We need to stop trying to change it. We need to stop thinking it needs to be something other than what it is. Oh my God. The weight that you can take off yourself if you just get on your own side and listen to your body. That is one of the best things I've ever learned in therapy. Okay, so now the practical part. Sit, do body scans, feel your feelings, describe it in poetic detail. You don't have to be poetic, just describe it in detail. Use as many adjectives as possible. Understand that your feelings are just information. Your feelings are telling you what's going on inside of your body. Feelings are like 
directions written in hieroglyphs. You don't know where you're going because you can't really read them, but if you start to look at them from different ways and start to analyze what is going on, then you can write your own directions. I bet you there's a better metaphor for that. Feelings are like reverse engineering. Are feelings like charades? Once you get a feeling, you have to stop and recognize that feeling, respond rather than react. If you can just like work on a way to take a breath anytime you start to feel activated, stop, stop everything. Oh my God, do not react. <laughs> Once something happens to you, pause. It's like a short circuit. That's what it is. You need to be a short circuit for your feelings. Once something sparks, shut all the power off. Shut it off. Then take your little flashlight and go, huh, what happened here? Then do the deciphering, then do the investigating, then do the interpreting. And once you have that, then you can start making some switches to turn the lights back on. If you keep reacting from your subconscious, from an activated state, that's not good. That's not good for you. That's not good for your relationships. It's definitely not helping growth. And I feel like I could talk about this forever, but if this isn't a new concept for you, great. But if this is a new concept for you, please try it. I wish I would have known this at 21. Next time, I'm not sure what I'm gonna talk about. I think what I'm gonna start doing is writing down all the suggestions that you write in the comment box. And then I'm just gonna sit down in the morning with my dirty chai Pick one and then just start talking about it. If there's anything that I missed or anything that you wanna hear more of in these types of videos, please let me know. I read all the comments and they super help me. The fact that I can even show up like this is because of your comments on my old videos. So thank you so much for caring enough to say things that my ego didn't love, but who I am as a person really needed to hear. And thank you for helping me show up like this because I like it. Oh. Okay, I should go put pants on. <laughs> okay, see you next time, bye.